Okay, hi everybody. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, the title is Advancement in Machine Reasoning. But before I, I'm going to talk about that, uh, I want to be sure that we talk about the same thing. You know, we talk about a lot of things, the impact of AI, uh, what that can be, what can be the future, and so on. But um, I would like to, to say something. The best intelligence we know today is human, right? Well, um, and human, uh, what do we process? We process data, we process knowledge, yes? So reductionist. <laughs> <laughs> so um, intelligence on human, we do not process data. Uh, I, I give you a list of 100 people you already lost. You, you cannot process that. We process knowledge. And the reason why we process knowledge is because knowledge is the most powerful way to compress data, right? Each time that you acquire a piece of knowledge, it's a result of a lot of data processing, curating, analysis, interpretation. Oh, and now I have this piece of knowledge that I can stick to other piece of knowledge. So how many times you hear the term knowledge when you go to AI conference? Data, data, data. So I'm not saying that you know the AI we are doing is not interesting, it's not great, it has potential, but it's not the intelligence that human we think it is. So just do not confuse the things. The other thing is, then, why do you process knowledge? Why, why intelligent process knowledge? Well, we don't get killed. <laughs> <laughs> we don't kill ourselves on that. Yeah. Yeah, but what is this process? What What would you call this process? <laughs> Reasoning. Again, when you go to all these AI conference, how many times you hear the term reasoning? Okay. So I really want you to understand that um, we, we are really just at the beginning of the era. And when people talk about AGI, it's a joke. First of all, it's not even interesting. What is interesting is the super intelligence. Uh, and it's a joke because what you have today with ChatGPT, we will never get there. ChatGPT doesn't reason. It just makes association of things. It, it brings a lot of great things, but not what the thing that you think it brings. So it's very important to, you know, thinking about the future, the danger, everything. But once we know exactly what we have in hand and what we are talking about. So, uh, Pankaj was talking about, you know, AI is like 70 years. I did 30 years of it. So since long time, so I was able to cross the different machine learning and so on. So I'm part of, uh, thank you Reza, to, to be on the board of, of Quai. But at the same time, I'm the founder CEO of Thinking Note. So Thinking Note, we are AI biotech company. And more precisely, we are AI digital cell clone. So in any you know, big industry, right, pharma, aviation, the first thing you do is to have a digital model, so then you can do simulation. In drug R&D, you don't have. People just do wet lab, test on animals, and then on humans right away. So what we do is using a new type of AI, distributed reasoning AI, we can generate in one hour any human digital cell clones. So we take the gene expression data of your cell or the patient cell, we inject it into the model, we, we, we generate that. So the generative AI we have is not machine learning based, it's a generative distributed reasoning AI. 
So yeah, I was talking about intelligence. I like very much this definition from Jean Piaget. She, intelligence is not what you know, it's what you do when you don't know. And I add with rational outcome, because you can do a lot of things, right, that you don't know, but. <laughs> so um, yeah. Each time you see AI slash ML, why on earth people always put AI slash ML and they talk about ML? So either we are agreed to put ML under AI and we stop to say ML, but uh, it's so annoying. Uh, so we have mainly two cognitive systems, um, pattern recognition and reasoning. And uh, this is fantastic book. Uh, Daniel Kahneman, system one, system two, uh, you think fast, you think slow, reactive against reflective, associative against logical, unconscious, conscious, yeah, because we take about 30,000 decisions per day, your phone, your things, and so on, but you don't think about it. So everything that you are doing in a second is pattern recognition. Only 5%, because it's painful to think. It's painful to reason, right? So what is interesting is at the same time, you have this dichotomy in AI. First, the physicalists, so we were talking about starting in the 50s, um, say that, OK, to reproduce intelligence, we have to reproduce neurons, because it's the neurons. Right? Um, I prefer to talk about connectionism. It's a real term. Because a lot of neural networks you hear about today has absolutely nothing with the neuron. I mean, the way it's implemented, there is no excitation threshold, there is no refractory period. It's, it's, it, it's just not connected with weight. So connectionism is the right term. On the other side, you have computational logic. So on one side, you have data-driven, knowledge-driven, correlation, versus causation. How many times, right, you heard that correlation is not causation, but people still confuse the two. And it's so important. This is another book, very interesting book from Drew Dapper, um, fantastic, uh, he's my mentor. Um, uh, if you really want to better understand correlation, causation, and he's the father of probabilistic network in machine learning and so on. So. We all agree that correlation is not causation. And we all agree that to have causation, we have to have correlation. Yeah? Are you sure? Since I ask, it's because there is a trick, right? No, it depends on your data. So pay attention to your data. So causation. You can have causation without correlation. How is that possible? So let's suppose I collect data on, on how crops grow, right? Oh, I can see correlation between rain and the crop grow. I have my correlation. But if I have too much rain, the crop die. So if I have my data all the way, I'm not going to see any correlation because sometimes it grows, sometimes it doesn't grow. But still, the rain is the cause. This means you need to have knowledge. You need to have reasoning. And people who tell you, you know what? I'm going to collect so much data, real world data, and I'm going to infer causal network. Either they don't understand correlation and causation one to one on one course, or they mislead you. So today, we are in the era of correlation. And it's amazing, it surprised so many people what we can do just with correlation at scale. So by the way, imagine what it can do with reasoning, right? So as I mentioned, why we process data is to generate knowledge. But knowledge is completely useless until somebody study it, right? Uh, Library is full of books. So you have to study it, so then you can use reasoning. And with all the technology, we have more and more knowledge. We still don't solve the knowledge bottleneck. 
And everything we are talking about mainly is about the data, but we don't talk about the knowledge. So it's where knowledge-driven AI come in. Um, but why you don't hear much about it is because most of the approach are centralized, which means you have one reasoning engine for different type of knowledge. We reason between analogy, constraint, probability, case base, we switch, no problem. So if you have one engine, it doesn't work. So I work on distributed AI for almost 30 years now, where each node is a mini reasoning engine itself. Okay. So from there, we have these two generative AI that I was talking about. So large language model. Here, I'm going to take another example and, uh, in, in, in biology. When you want to understand the phenotype of the cell, you look for the genome, you look for the gene expression. But if you have a gene association with statistic, you see the association, but you still don't understand what's going on. You don't understand the mechanistic, the causality. On the other side, if you have causation, then you can understand the gene interactions. And this is very important because then you can know where to you know, hit because you, know the, you understand the causality. So this is just to give you a, a quick panel of the different type of AI approach. So it's not just chat GPT or just machine learning, right? Um, and in AI symbolic, the reasoning, uh, you have production rules, very old system. Um, you have constraint programming. You have natural language processing, but the old way. You have case-based reasoning. You have semantics network. You have Logic programming, Prolog, is a fantastic language for that. You have planning and scheduling. You have frames and so on. So there are a lot of different approaches. One of the approaches that is very interesting is the multi-agent approach. It exists message system, where the agent interacts with message. And then blackboard, where the agent just notice what's going on on the blackboard. So suppose I'm agent A, I need something, I just put on the blackboard, so then the agent B say, oh, hey, I know how to solve that. Then macro connection is, I'm going to talk just a little bit later, and you're going to see why. So we talk about the advancement in reasoning. In AI, advancement take a lot of time. As you can see, 70 years, right? So today, people start to talk about neurosymbolic AI. So this is uh, something I, I found on the internet. A lot of things wrong here. First, uh, it should be the other side. What I mean by that is symbolic brain do not analyze music. It's the pattern recognition. You recognize a piece of music, right? So combining the two, what people are doing today at best is to combine two different systems from you know, statistical system and symbolic system. Now. What if we can combine that in one type of AI? So this is the research I did for decades, a unified cognitive AI framework. And it's about, so this is the publication I published 30 years ago. Uh, this is the first generation um, on how to combine the capacity of learning of symbolic reasoning and so on. And it's called macro-connectionism. So tomorrow, I'm going to have one hour talk. Uh, if you're interested uh, to have more about it, uh, I will more talking about the life science. It's uh, at 11.15 in, in ballroom uh, F. Thank you very much. And uh, <laughs> see you later.